Hello friends, I am excited to share with you this little tutorial. I'm basically breaking down how I've been painting Penstemon. These are three different varieties. I mean, I guess this technically isn't a Penstemon, but it's like in the Penstemon family. I don't know a whole lot about flowers. I'm no um, master gardener and I'm definitely no botanical illustrator. So, you know, take these illustrations with grain of salt but they're a fun project to do and they are pulling from real life. So these are flowers that I've seen on my bike rides, on the trails, in the mountains of Utah in the summer. And I've seen these for the last couple of years. So like I know they're native. Well, I guess this one isn't technically native. So this is Dalmatian toad flax and it is an invasive weed species, but it's so beautiful. So we're including it anyway. Um, this is Palmer's Penstemon, and this is Firecracker Beard Tongue Penstemon. I've seen all three of these on the trail with lots of other ones. Um, but they're fun because they're long and they kind of sweep and they move, which I feel like if you're going for a modern um, abstract watercolor, these really lend themselves towards that modern abstract watercolor approach. But um, because they like have the sweeping effect, you can add them with text. And I did that here I had issues my, with my ink. I used a watercolor ink and it just didn't really take well on the paper. So, but you see how like you can include these and just kind of have them branching around and then you can have the text on the side. So I'll show you how we can frame this and add um, text with it, which is one of the things that I feel like is a little bit hard for calligraphers sometimes, at least me, where I want to have these artistic illustrative elements and I want to have the text and I don't really know how to combine the two. So I feel like this really works well because this sweeps around, this kind of lends itself into a flourish and it creates this oval shape that hugs this text right here. So um, that's kind of what we're thinking about. Let's talk about the structure of um, Palmer's Pensamen and Firecracker Beer Pensamen. Palmer's Pensamen and um, the Dalmatian Toad Flax Feel like are very similar um, in the way that they're sh structured. Um, they're just one's pink and one's yellow. So um, Palmer's Penstemon, it has these pink blossoms that are almost in the shape of like popcorn. So you think about popcorn kernels, this long stem, and inside the popcorn kernels is like this darker color because it Penstemon is in the Snapdragon family. So you have this opening right here. And then you have your nice long stalk. And with both of, well, with all of these, you have the same structure of leaf where you have a teardrop shape leaf. Um, and some of them are more like triangular shaped. Um, and then the stalk kind of comes out from there. So that's what we're doing. We're foreshortening these. And there are two, you've got the, the stem and then you've got one leaf that comes out of here and one leaf that comes out of here. And they're wider towards the stalk and tapered at both ends. So that's what we're trying to represent here. Now with Firecracker, um, the Beard Tongue Penstemon, you have this nice long stalk that curves and then you have a little um, seedling bead thing up at the top. Um, and then you have your flowers kind of stem from here. And sometimes you'll have two flowers uh, blossom from the same point on the stalk. Sometimes it's just one and you have this whole row of flowers kind of coming sequentially down like you see right here. This, um, it's more of a tubular, um, like it's kind of like a tube shaped and then this is kind of comes around like this and that's your that's basically the shape of this firecracker and this is the inside of the flower and there's um, the stamen in there and then you've got this pretty little leaflet thing where the blossom comes out I'm probably not using the correct technical terminology um, but that's fine because we're doing modern watercolors and we're not doing botanical illustrations for the education of others. So this is basically the the underlying structure of these flowers. And 
that hopefully can translate into the abstract brush movements that we're going to do. I'm using the Art Philosophy Co. Classics watercolor set with a porcelain dish and just my big tray of water. And then I'm using this Zen Arts Faux Squirrel Rigger. And then this is a size eight round, same brand. You can use just about any size round brush. If you're going small, I'd suggest a size six round. If you're going bigger, um, the eight should be sufficient, but you can always go up to a 10. I find that if you buy high quality brushes that have a nice sharp point, then you can use a really big brush for just about any size of painting. This is Arches. This is the hot press. You can see there's just no texture on there. So this is a five by seven card. And then I also have an hourglass oblique holder with a Hunt 99 and wa uh, walnut ink over on the side for a quote. If you're not sure about how to do calligraphy, I teach calligraphy online at calligraphy.org. You can check out my classes over there, but I'll basically walk you through this particular project right here. First, we wanna make sure that we have our greens mixed up. And for me personally, I really like a muddy green. I think it's important to have just that little bit of earthiness to the green. I like to add a little bit of orange. Now the orange, it's not a direct opposite, but it is in, it's coming from the red family, which is a compliment but it has that yellow in it. So it keeps the brightness, but it adds just a little bit more depth to it. So that's why I'm adding the orange there. With that little bit of orange, it just, you get a lot more depth in there and it just looks more true to life. First, we're gonna start with the Palmer's Penstemon, the pink blossom. I'm gonna grab my opera pink and I'm gonna mix it in with some white just to calm that down. Now, if you wanna lighten up any pigment on your palette, just add water, but this color is just so vibrant. I want to tame it. So the white is going to do that. That's a fair amount calmer than the original pigment. It's just still a little bit on the primary side for me. So I'm going to add just a touch of orange. Okay. So we've got our colors for the Palmer Penstemon. We're going to start with the blossoms and the blossoms are going to, we're going to curve around this way. We're going to have just some bigger blossoms and then they taper off. For this part, I'm gonna use my size eight round. Get our pigment and just start creating these like little popcorn shapes. And just arch our way around. Inside the interior space of the Palmer's Penstemon, we've got a couple things going on. You've got a little bit of yellow, as you, you do see the stamen. Um, and sometimes you, you see it darkens towards the middle. So I'm just gonna have the dots of yellow and not gonna let that pigment bloom inside there as I work on the stem. Everything's just like kind of wet. So I'm gonna bring this up and the stem is gonna bleed into this pink just a little bit. And that is what adds that iconic sort of abstract modern watercolor. And then I'm going to add some little buds towards the end. And the leaves start small at the top and then they get bigger. You wanna add these leaves kind of coming from either side. So I'm foreshortening this particular leaf. See how I'm adding that point right here? And then this side's gonna point, and we're looking at it more profile. And this is foreshortened. We can keep working our way down or we can just kind of add more leaves just a little later. So there's our palm repentiment. And this is a great filler if you're doing other bouquets. It's just so pretty and it, it kind of arcs around so it can create that nice movement. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is the Dalmatian toad, toad flax. I've got all of that nice muddy green already worked up and I'm gonna do uh, the I'm gonna do the stem first and then the blossom second. So I'm using the rigor making it a little darker and I'm gonna put it behind this guy. Maybe I'll put in another one over here. One of the reasons why we work with a nice high quality paper is the paper keeps, the really good papers, keeps the pigments wet longer so you can work with it a little bit more easily. So with this Dalmatian toad flax, it's like a snapdragon and it's got this fun little bloom. It's kind of round and popcorn-y shaped, but then it has a spur that comes off the bottom like you would see on a 
Columbine or something. So we wanna, we're just gonna create those shapes coming around and we're just using a regular yellow. Um, and then I'm coming through and just pulling and creating those spurs. They just kind of come off the side. Okay, now I'm gonna finish out the rest of the stem. You can do this in either order, but I just felt like doing the stem first. You see how you can let that blossom happen. Okay, now we need to add the leaves in. And the leaves are taking on that same structure where you have two leaves on either side of the stem and they're pointed at the ends. So I'm just adding that. So one thing that I'm noticing about this beard, uh, not the beard time, the toad flax is that at the top, the leaves come up and then towards the bottom, the leaves come out more perpendicular. Now for the last one, we're going to do the beard tongue, the firecracker penstemon. And that is, you definitely want to do the stalk first and the flower second. That's something that I noticed out in the wild is that the stalk is a deeper green. It's almost like the red from the flower is mixing with the green. So you have a much more muted, tame green going on over here. So it's a very different color green. We're gonna add some red to our green. All right, so I added a little bit of dark blue to this green so that we have a really deep green going on here. You see that green versus that green right there. That always helps to have a little test paper. From here, I'm going to put this ahead. I'm gonna put it in front. And these kind of have a little hook. And then we create the buds that the, that the beard tongue blossoms come from. And I'm doing it in two strokes, basically making a V shape that connects to the stem. I'm going just straight for red. I'm not mixing any other color with it. But I wanna make sure that I have plenty of water. I'm starting kind of thin and working my way thicker. And see how this kind of comes out. I wanna add that little beard towards the bottom. So it's like another shape. Go in just kind of different directions. Don't have them be the, exactly the same. Then it doesn't really feel true to form with real life. So there we've got those. And if you want to just really like brighten that up, add a little bit of yellow because we've got yellow here. If we add a little bit of yellow here, then we kind of bring all three flowers together, even though in real life, there really isn't a lot of yellow going on right there. Just add a little pop. Yellow. And that just all of a sudden brings these flowers in with these flowers and it feels more unified. In floral arrangements, it's kind of a rule of threes. So maybe we do a little bit longer one of these beard tongues and bring it out. And the thing about the beard tongue is that these leaves towards the bottom are actually quite long. Now I'm going to finish out these. Add some longer leaves in here. So we've got this fun, full shape coming down the side. And then we can add our text over here on this side. We're going to add that to that. First, I'm going to write in my lines and get my pen. I'm using walnut ink. 199 nib and an hourglass holder from Paper and Ink Arts. And I've sped up the video 200% just because we are at 14 minutes right now and I didn't want this to be boring you to tears. So um, I have chosen to lay my calligraphy behind. So I pick up my nib and sort of follow the line um, as if the text were behind the watercolors. I feel like that really integrates the watercolor and the text nicely together. And you may notice I am not crossing my T or looping my K just yet. Um, this is, you know, I had an idea for how this composition would go, but I was too lazy to really like plot it out. So this is my cheat method for plotting out my flourishes. I do them all after the fact. 
So you see I'm finishing off the E, the loop on the K, the T's, and the TH ligature there. So um, just, you know, trying to keep everything kind of coordinating nice. And then uh, this was not the ideal nib to use for such a small lower or, you know, print text, but we just went with it anyway. I was too lazy to get up and get a different nib, um, but I feel like it works just fine. So there you have it, a little art project based off of the flowers you can find on the trails in Utah. Thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like to learn more about calligraphy, check out my online classes at calligraphy.org and stay tuned for more watercolor videos and real-time calligraphy videos and have a good one.